Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Jarrett Show, as always, and your handsome host, Javon Malik. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say that with a straight face, but you know it's true. This week, I am in London, as always, and uh, Eric has travelled far to Vegas to attend Black Hat DEF CON. And uh, has the travel curse struck him again? We will soon find out that and woes of MFA coming up on this week's episode. Welcome to The Jarek Show, featuring your hosts, Javad Malik and Eric Krohn. Timely topics, poorly presented. So let's bring in, let's see if he's survived, if he's in Vegas or if he didn't make it out the airport. Eric Krohn, where are you? I am in Vegas, and I did get to spend the week in Black Hat. Now, I'm not doing DEF CON, but I am uh, going to finish up. Well, Black Hat's pretty much finished now, but uh, I finally get to fly out today. And I got to tell you, it was a much better year this year than it was last. Yeah, last year it was pretty dead, wasn't it? There was like yeah. they didn't even out the carpet for most of the, the hall, I think you so, remember. Yeah, so they didn't do that again this year. But they said it was because they're being eco-friendly somehow or another by not rolling out the carpet runner. So it was a lot of cement, a lot of people with sore feet. Um, but there were probably three or four times of vendors as last year. I mean, it was just uh, the difference between last year and this year was staggering as far as that went. Were they being eco-friendly or echo-friendly? Because with all those hard floors, like you cannot hear anything other than your voice bouncing around. And that's a very good point. It was kind of loud in the hall because, yeah, it doesn't soften that at all. Um, yeah, I, I just... I think it's an excuse to save a few bucks, quite frankly. Um, you know, the the booths themselves did, in fact, have carpet, but outside of that was all cement. And if you've been to one of these large conferences, I mean, here at Vegas, just to get to Black Hat, it's like a mile and a half walk across Mandalay Bay, right? You got you got to pack like the Oregon Trail, if you remember that old game, right? Some people die of dysentery on the way out. Um, it's already a long haul. And then you're like, welcome to the nice cement floors enjoy yeah. yourselves but uh it was good it was it was pretty good we uh, uh we had a lot of people around got to talk to a lot of people i haven't seen in in many years and uh met some new ones as well which is fantastic and unfortunately missed some other people too there were some people like uh gal mandy that i wanted to get a hold of um some other folks like that that i just wanted to see that unfortunately you know things are just spread out and crazy so did you did you manage to attend uh, b-sides vegas nope and so to be clear the reason i'm not doing this or the key reason i'm not doing this is you know i had that achilles surgery and so my foot is still in this uh in this walking booth and it hurts like hell so um i rented it, this scooter in, in another life eric was a farmer because he can milk something for hours <laughs> a day, far longer than need be but okay, so your foot hurt. What was the mask situation like in in uh, in Black Hat? Was they recommended mandatory? Um, so nothing in Black Hat. It was just like recommended, whatever you do, you boo. However, DefCon, uh, I believe, is still uh, mandatory. So that was kind of an odd mix there. And I saw some people wearing them, some people not wearing them. It was it was a it, it was an interesting mix. Um, it definitely wasn't a discussion point in any way, shape, or form. Interesting. So what else is interesting is over the last few days, we've had a number of stories. And uh, let's bring up the, the first one where Cisco have very nicely responsibly disclosed that they suffered a small breach of sorts. I say small, but, you know, who knows? So what happened here is one of their employees were had their personal Google account popped. They were using Chrome to store and synchronize all their passwords, their corporate passwords and their personal passwords. So they got access to their corporate credentials. The attackers then were able to log on and generate the push MFA on the employee's phone. The employee being suspicious of this at first ignored it. So they kept on doing it. And 
then they started phoning the employee up as well, saying, hello, we're calling from the IT department, we're calling from your SSO provider or whoever, you need to accept this, it's a security check, it's all perfectly fine. And as they say, I believe the, the term being thrown around is 2FA fatigue or MFA fatigue is where you wear someone down with constant pop-ups to the point where they just say, OK, a bit like Eric's dating life, where he went up to his now wife and just pestered her for weeks at a time until she finally agreed to go on a date with him. What's interesting and now I, I get it. I mean, it, it can be really annoying. Like it's it's a bit like when your car alarm starts going off and odd hours, odd hours. And then after a while, you start to ignore it because you're like, hey, even when the wind blows, this thing starts beeping at me. So you wake up one morning and then it's it's gone. Um, but one person on Twitter, they, they said, uh, 2FA fatigue, oh, I've just got it here. 2FA fatigue is one of the fakest things I have ever heard of. <laughs> Why are proper security professionals treating this as though it's not just a weak excuse? You're the man who knows all about weak excuses. What is your take on that, Eric? <laughs> no, I do think it's interesting. And, and I think the, the power comes in where uh, they had that hybrid portion where they actually started calling people and a lot of people don't expect that level of engagement from the attackers you know it's like oh i got this email i don't care but then if you get a follow-up text message or imagine a phone call that says i just sent you an email and this is really critical how many people are going to go oh that was fake too right it, it just doesn't happen that way we're just not wired that way yet so it's a very effective way of doing this and I haven't seen the details on this, but I actually have a, a slide that I use uh, on one of my MFA talks, which I happened to do yesterday in the booth huh? as we were parked next to Cisco. I hope they listened. Um, but uh, it was uh, Google Authenticator, the Google login, and it was sending me MFA codes. And over the course of probably 30 or 45 minutes, I was trying different things like logging in. I was actually testing a, a man in the middle attack and it sent me the same code probably seven, eight, nine times. It never sent a new code. So you start thinking, you know, if I didn't know I, that was going on, I start thinking, oh, maybe something got screwy. It's stuck in a loop or something like that. If I just enter it, maybe it'll go away. It'll quit freaking sending me these stupid things, right? There's a lot of reasons I can see people um, having a rationale for this and justifying just putting in the damn code so it quits messing with you so thought it was very interesting um that that this happened and it also goes along with the talks when when i talk about um using password vaults people go well, what about just the, the password manager in the uh you know in the browser and and clearly um i i usually yeah. say those are better for convenience than they are for security. Here's an attack that went right after that, or used that to leverage their way in. Yeah, yeah. this is the thing. This is the, the whole convenience and security, because push-based MFA is extremely convenient, yeah. because you just have to tap yes or approve, or whatever the wording is. It's a lot easier than having to open up an Authenticator app, look at the code, type it in and anxiously typing in before the the time yeah. comes out. <laughs> as it's <laughs> blinking red in the last like couple of seconds yeah yes 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 but um but on this hot on the tails of this story uh twilio suffered a breach uh through a smishing attack so a number of their employees were sent uh smishing messages and they look like that, oh, your credentials have expired, please click here to log on and change your password. And they use the words like Okta or SSO in the domain name and, and the company name. So it looked very convincing. So a couple of these employees actually clicked through to OK. It went there, they entered their password, their, their credentials were compromised, and they were logged on. And, uh, you know, it's it's a really, really interesting way that you can see that how all of this ties together that you know the reason why mf i mean mfa let let's draw a line under this one thing mfa is probably one of the single best most effective yeah. technical controls you can put in place it definitely helps you a lot yes the, 
However, there are various grades of MFA and some are a lot more secure than others. The ones that aren't so secure were okay a few years ago because they weren't as commonly practiced. Now that a lot of these organizations have got some form of MFA in place, the criminals are now trying to fish you using your MFA. So that, that's the only difference. So it's not like the technology's changed in any way of, of these underlying things, but this happened. After this came out, Cloudflare... Well, before you, go, before you go on that one... Oh, okay, go on. I want to point out for those listening at home that may not know, smishing is SMS phishing. It's the text messages that you get. Like, this is your bank, log in. That's a text message phishing attack. So I just wanted to be clear... So uh, for our, our listeners at home. Yeah, okay, yeah, fine. it's not something kinky that Eric engages in over the weekend. A few days after that, Cloudflare came out and said, well, someone tried the Twilio smish attack on us as well, but they failed. Mm. And the question was like, well, how did they fail? And basically they used those hardware keys like a YubiKey or something like that as their second factor. Yep. Yeah, like one these, of those ones. One of those USB ones. key. That's right. Yeah. So they uh, so they started receiving reports that employees got text messages containing a link that appeared to be a Cloudflare Okta login page. So again, it's the same MO, probably the same same gang behind it. And um, the URL uh, in the text message is linked to a domain, Cloudflare-Okta com uh, and it not been picked up by the company's monitoring systems because i think uh it was had been registered less than 40 minutes before the phishing wow. messages were sent. so you see how like because cloudflare like many other companies they monitor continuously for any lookalike domain names and if it is then they block them or have them taken down or what have you so these criminals were like okay do you have the, the text messages ready to go okay here it is Let's register the domain. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Send out those messages. So literally, they, they're trying to compromise your account. So you could have nothing there, no text message, no domain, no IOC, no nothing. And within an hour, you could go from nothing to being compromised. That's the kind of scary thing we're, we're dealing with now. That's but, a problem uh, with uh, reputational type um, controls where they're looking at domain reputations and not looking at how long it's been up. Um, you know, there's those domain reputation ones where people report it as a phishing site and then they start end up, you know, cutting those, uh, you know, they start blocking them at the firewalls and stuff. And, you know, all this talk about MFA just reminds me of something that, that I've been thinking about quite a bit lately. And that is... Uh, MFA can be a false sense of security for people too. And as security professionals, we need to make sure that we don't just say, oh, you got MFA, you're good. You know, you, you can use a five character password or, you know, we still have to have those key things like uh, not reusing passwords and having good, strong, non-simple, unique passwords in play. It doesn't replace that. It's an add to that. And I'm afraid so many people maybe using it as a crutch, or they may feel like, oh, I've got MFA, and now everything's safe. Clearly it's not. Indeed, indeed. Uh, it, it, yeah. Anyway, our good friend, <laughs> our good friend and colleague, Roger Grimes, has this ah. post, I thought. It's a, it's a list of good, strong MFA. Uh, so yeah. these are like, not they, these are more phishing resistant forms of MFA. Uh, so we can pop the link of that in the in the notes, and you can go through it. There's NIST, there's FIDO too. There's you know all these things. The um, irony yeah. to this is, if you go back up to the very top of the page, um, that key, that MFA key in the picture, keep going. That is my MFA key. <laughs> I gave him the picture of that. We actually <laughs> took the picture in the office one time. I think it was ended up being in a book, but oh, that's wow. one of my Fiat and uh, uh, keys right there. So <laughs> good, good catch. I love how I just randomly show up and stuff like this. I know it's just <laughs> like so. Like we, we, we pick I'm stories sorry. where you're quoted in. We we pick stories where your photography is being used in. You know, I'm just waiting for the bill for royalties to come from your <laughs> <laughs> right. Whatever it is. Right. 
No, that's a good article though. And it's, it's a good read. It's something to, to keep in mind. Um, for those of you that are listening in the podcast, we'll be putting these links in the show notes. So feel free to check those out down there. Yep. Indeedy, indeedy, indeedy. So that was that. Um, and seeing as you're in Vegas and the travel curse is never too far from you. <laughs> I know. I know. You yeah. know what's going up. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Vegas slammed with more flash floods as casinos underwater again. What, what yeah. floor are you on? <laughs> I'm on the 21st floor. So I was fairly dry. But I will say this woke me up in the middle of the night. Like it was coming down in buckets. Now, I, I'm from the desert. I'm from Arizona originally. And when we have what we call monsoons, they come through and they dump a lot of water very quickly and then they move on. OK, but it, it all just hits so big. And I'll tell you, I don't know if the building got struck by lightning or not. I'm in Mandalay Bay, but there was a crash last night, like a, a thunderclap that woke me up and kind of shocked me. It was one of the loudest I've ever heard. Um, now, I looked out the window prior to us going online, and it is business as usual out there. And that's what we see in these monsoons. It overwhelms the drainage for a little bit, but then, you know, within a half hour or so, things are generally back to normal, which is what seems to have happened here. Very good. Very good. But they were saying that there were like average hour and a half delays at uh, the airport. And I was like, you got to be kidding me, man. I fly out today. Are you kidding me? But according to sources, a.k.a. Roger, who already flew out, um, things are actually going OK out there. Excellent. Excellent. So other than that, like if you could summarize Black Hat, your experience in a few key points, was there anything that you learned? Was there anything new? Was there anything interesting? People are glad to be out and about again. Well, that's absolutely no use to anybody. So we'll we'll cut him off there. Uh, as always, thank you very much for joining us. And next week, I'm actually out. So we might not have a Jared show. It might just be an Eric show or an Eric. Uh, but until then, stay secure, my friend.